K98 Talk is expanding its lineup for 2015. This means we are expanding our advertising base. Whether you're a startup trying to push through to the next level or an established business trying to supplement your advertising budget, web-based advertising is a solid investment. Thanks to Talk's newest partnership with TuneIn Radio and instant access to our sister station, K98FM, we give you worldwide access at a reasonable cost. Interested parties should email us at sales at k98fm.com. In these uncertain economic times, you've got to do whatever you can to save money. One of our biggest expenses can be our cars, especially when unexpected repair bills hit. Not anymore. If you own a vehicle with less than 130,000 miles, is less than 12 years old, has a warranty about to expire, or even no warranty at all, you could stop paying for car repairs. Roadside assistance, towing, and rental coverage are all included. Don't wait for the next repair. Make one free call right now to see if you qualify. If your vehicle vehicle is less than 12 years old, has less than 130,000 miles, even if it's out of warranty, paying for car repairs can become a thing of the past. Call us right now and get your car protected before your next repair bill hits. Get protection and no more repair bills. Call 800-696-1030. Again, 800-696-1030. That's 800-696-1030. 800-696-1030. Joe had huge problems with the IRS. I knew it was coming. I hadn't filed taxes since 1990. All the IRS letters coming in added up to a nightmare. It got up to like $68,000. My heart started beating fast. It's like, there's no way, man. I mean, I ain't going to be able to do this. Then they stopped his paycheck. So that's when I started making phone calls and found U.S. Tax Shield. U.S. Tax Shield went to work immediately. They just took the bull by the horns. What blew my mind is he called the IRS right then and there. So why is U.S. Tax Tax Shield A plus rated with the Better Business Bureau? Joe knows. They saved me a ridiculous amount of money. If you owe more than ten thousand dollars to the IRS or state, choose the company Joe chose. U.S. Tax Shield. It was the best decision I made. U.S. Tax Shield is the way to go. Life is good. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Call eight hundred four seven one thirty two eighty seven. U.S. Tax Shield. Boo raw. Yes. <laughs> 800-471-3287 Wondering why you're up early with us on a Sunday morning making a cocktail? News lately got you drinking? Hung over from the mainstream media by Sunday? We are, and we got you covered. We sure do. We got your hangover cure for those weekly news blues. So sit back. Top off your mimosa and add some Baileys to that coffee. Take a match to your copy of the New York Times. Light, funny, and oh yeah, news with booze. And a lot of laughter. Welcome to Bloody Marys and Broad Sheets. I my dues to make it. And a good, easy Sunday morning, November 1st, 2015, 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. That means it's J.D. and Stacy with that Bloody Marys and Broadsheets, baby. Yo, kill for your mainstream media hangover here on that K98 Talk. My Mets is in trouble. Everybody pray, y'all. You guys know what to do. Everybody within the sound of my voice, get over to K98Talk.org. Get in that chat room. Say hello to Stacy. Make sure you got your beverage in hand and you close off. Today, we're going to be bringing you Weekend Update by that Eric Williams at that bot, why is that tired.com. RNC gets its stones, but it might be a little too late. Budget mess? Of course we got robots. Obamacare price hikes? Who saw that coming? Carly, The View, and much, much more. Remember, guys, we're not just here Sunday mornings, 11 a.m. for that Bloody Marys and Broadsheets on K98 Talk. We do it again live Tuesday nights, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard for Game On. Game On live again Thursday nights, 9 p.m. after our brand new leading at Bell River for Whom the Bell Tolls on that 8 p.m. Eastern Standard. Remember, Thursday night, that two-hour block of radio. You got 8 p.m., you got the Bell River and the Bell Tolls, and you got 9 p.m., you got J.D. and Stacy for the Game On. Remember, guys, Fridays, 5 p.m. drive time at WNWNJC, serving South Jersey, Philadelphia, Northern Delaware for that 4.2 million listeners. This coming Tuesday night, everybody put it down in your calendar. We have a very special guest live for the hour, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Very good friend of the program. I think this is going to be his third appearance here with Stacy and I. We're going to have Jay Cost in his new tome, What's So Bad About Cronyism? Answer to that is everything. Everything. 
Right. And remember, guys, after Jay Cost uh, Tuesday night, J.D. and Stacey in that game on is going to be 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time Tuesday. Not, now, not this Tuesday. Tuesday going to be that 10 p.m. with that Jay Cost, baby. But after that, we're going to be 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time that Tuesday night. We'll make it easy for everybody. 9 Tuesday, 9 Thursday, 11 Sunday. Five Friday. Remember, JD going to get that YouTube up of that flip side show with Michael Loftus. And everybody knows what to do after the show, during the games. You put the sound off on the game. You go to Spreaker.com. You hashtag JD and Stacy. You go through the catalog of everything we've been doing here for that Ricky Dicky Tommy, Rick Robinson. And because it's a Sunday, everybody knows. Uh, They're going to be taking care of those boys from Oaktown. And Raiders ain't got no chance again. And for those of you who missed it yesterday, there was, there was a, <laughs> for, uh, for uh, uh, Caddyshack fans, Cinderella story, little known picture out of Long Island, New York. Uh, yesterday, Stephen Matz, 23 years old, from Stony Brook, Long Island, where he attended Ward Melville High School, was pitching in Game 3 of the World Series just about 40 miles away from where he grew up, uh, what he grew up outside of Old Shea, which is now City Field. The game last night was phenomenal. This was Matt's only ninth start in the pros as a lefty. He starts in the World Series last night. He came out right before the sixth inning. They were up 3-2, and Familia came in to close and gave it all away. I don't think Stacy knows what the hell I'm talking about, but that was a little... Uh, yeah. uh, uh, that was a little... Uh, uh, a little recap. Total about aversion to watching baseball on TV. No, you know what it is, though. You know the Mutsies haven't been in the World Series. I don't think since '01, maybe mm-hmm. about 14 years. They haven't won a title in about 29. That last '86 team with Gary Carter and those guys looks like a magical team. The only thing is, the Royals last year lost to the Giants in seven games. And if you take a look at the stats in Major League Baseball of teams that lose the World Series in the seventh game, come back that next year to win. That might be what you're saying, but all the Met fans last night were just left with a hole. <laughs> Didn't the first game go into like 14 innings or something? It was a real scrapper. It did. It almost, it almost went to 15. As a matter of fact, Familia, who came in to save last night, he blew that save in the first game and then blew last night's save. I think he's the first pitcher since 2006, 2008 to have two blown World Series. I mean, think about it. He's got two blown World Series saves. Uh, in the first three, uh, it, has the chat room left us? Are they here just for po- <laughs> are they here just for politics? Hold on, let's keep them. Let's keep. Them. All right, for those of you who aren't Mets fans, it's over, Jenny. All right, we put that. Uh, we put that second yeah. to bed. Good Sunday morning. Good Sunday morning. I'm still stuck on the fact it's November first. How did that happen? I don't know, but we got that. You know, I used to get all like, excited about turning the clocks back and getting that extra hour sleep, and it really didn't do anything for me anymore. Like, now I need, like, an extra six hours. Yeah, no, the, the only thing that, that does anything for me in that whole thing is when we lose an hour, I'm not right for a week. <laughs> no, but you know what? I haven't been. Gaining an hour, eh, nice. Losing an hour, uh, eh, not so good. I haven't been right for so long. It's, uh, it's absolutely insane. So, since we were on the air Thursday night, uh, the Obama administration has shifted gears. We are now have boots on the ground in Syria. They are 50 people. Um, <laughs> I mean, it, it, it's not even the, the, the whole point of that. Okay, terrific. It's just it, 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 we're sending 50 people so that this jerk off can say that we're not engaged in some kind of war over there. I think it's absolutely disgusting. Wow. Well, I mean, it's all semantics at this point, really. It's all ball bearings these days. Yeah, and it, it's really all all just, you know, trying to prove that Vladimir isn't kicking his butt. Are you kidding me? Are you, we're all gonna, Vladimir we're all... is stomping all over him. Dude, Putin to Obama. Putin just tells Obama, Obama, listen. That's basically what uh, what Putin sings to Obama every every time yeah. they discuss anything. Oh, let's I mean, let's not have a no fly zone because we'd have to enforce it. So let's let's just let you know Putin run the skies and bomb all the assets that we had ab- actually attempted to try to train, who might want a moderate government in Syria because God knows nobody wants that. All right, I before mean, it's we, just ridiculous. Before we get into what we uh, what we got here to uh, to do the show about today, we're gonna bring you that weekend update for that weekend of November first, two thousand fifteen, for that Mr. Eric Williams of the Bob Wire Satire <laughs> Oh, 
former Speaker John Boehner tidied up the House before leaving office. He said his two main objectives to achieve before leaving were to give Obama everything he wanted in the budget deal and then update his voter registration info so he can start voting as a Democrat next year. I thought he started a couple of years ago. Marco Rubio Bing. was mistaken for Moses by some during the debate this week since he was standing next to a burning bush. Jeb got burned repeatedly during the night even as his campaign starts to flame out. With over-the-top liberal bias on display from the CNBC moderators, it was finally revealed the moderators were actually just Muppets, with Chris Matthews, Rachel Maddow, and Brian Williams having their hands up the moderators' backsides, moving them out and asking the questions. In a departing interview on Fox News, former House Speaker John Boehner said that President Obama said to him, Man, I'm really going to miss you. Boehner also revealed that the president's cool nickname for him was Rubber Stamp. President Obama is sending troops into Syria, but because of his promise to eliminate boots on the ground in any military conflict, he has done what liberals always do, change the language. He describes the new combat mission in Syria as boots on the outer surface of the Earth's crust. Okay, terrific. RNC Chair Rents Previous said CNBC will not ever host another Republican presidential debate after their unprofessional debacle this week. Something else he said, CNBC will never yet again get another 14 million viewers for any show on their network ever. His name is Rance Previous. A quick reminder to everyone that might have forgotten last night, be sure to turn your clock bombs back one hour to mark the end of Ahmad saving time. Where's my darker, darker, darker? I hate different soundboards. And that's your weekend <laughs> update for the weekend of November 1st, 2015. 15 brought to you by that Mr. Eric Williams and that Bob Wire Satire.com. All right, hold on. Let me reset my audio my bubble there. I understand how the Ahmed the Clock Boys become such a big joke. Like that 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 really isn't funny. <laughs> it's yeah. not really funny, but I mean the things that have happened afterwards, so you know, he and the family moving to Qatar and President Obama not even saying, Oops, maybe that was a mistake. All right. So tell the people about it's not even a budget deal, it's more of a budget agreement that came about this week. Well, Speaker John Boehner wanted to pave the way for Paul Ryan and not have any really ucky, awful, terrible stuff on the plate for him to start off with. So basically, he undid every positive fiscal thing the GOP has ever done. (laughs) You know, they had some hard-fought concessions there. They had the sequester in, and now we're just not going to pay any attention to it. What have they undone? Well, they undid the sequester by agreeing to, I believe, another $150 billion in spending, uh, about 80 on the military and about 70 on Democratic pet, pet projects. From what I'm reading between the lines, it hasn't really said what the other 70, or I couldn't find what the other 70 is being spent on. Um, you know, and in addition, uh, basically, we have no debt ceiling. None. That's right. And, you know, the smartest radio audience in the business does have it right. It really is an agreement. It's an outline. But, I mean, if you take a look at the way that the press played this, behind the secret budget deal that drove conservatives mad, that was Politico's headline, then budget deal shows limits of GOP leverage against Obama was the same one in the L.A. Times. And, listen, for those of you, journalism has gotten so weak. And and so if you print it out, third page of the L.A. Times uh, story says that that, that they list Paul Ryan as Democrat of Wisconsin. But if you ah. take a look, I mean, it's bad enough that our Republican leadership sells us out time and time and time and time again. But what they do, you know, last uh, Wednesday night in that debate, you saw this big turning point where the Republican candidates themselves decided that they were not going to play the mainstream media's game anymore. And I said it on Thursday show, and I do believe it. I think that as time bears out, you know, we may have been seeing a complete sea change in that Ted Cruz moment. Um, when he slapped the hell out of the debate, debate moderators for how the how D.C. Republicans respond to the MSM game of here behind secret deal, conservatives mad, budget deal shows, blah, 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 GOP limits. But you take a look at Mitch McConnell and John Boehner, and I think yeah. that hopefully this has been the death of that establishment. Politico, a potential national default, John Boehner's resignation, and a resolute Barack Obama aligned to temporarily halt D.C.'s dysfunction. Just 12 days before a catastrophic debt default threatened to drop like a hammer on the U.S. economy, John Boehner and Mitch McConnell dialed up President Barack Obama with some bad news. They could not pass a, quote, clean bill raising the debt ceiling. At that moment on October 22nd, any chance of a budget deal was dead. Democrats wanted too much new spending, Republicans wanted entitlement changes, and there was still chaos. This is how political is reporting it. 
chaos in the House surrounding Boehner's resignations. In other words, just listen to the, the language and the adjectives. In other words, an ugly end to a year of partisan acrimony. I want everybody in the audience to think, when was the last time you saw Politico or any other mainstream media publication when Harry Reid got rid of the filibuster? You had these same publications saying that it had to be done for the sake of getting things done in the Senate. Now, when Republicans are in charge, it's an ugly end to a year of partisan acrimony. It goes on. Obama said the congressional GOP could lead the country into a default or strike a bigger deal that took a shutdown threat off the table and avoided a debt crisis. I think that Boehner and uh, McConnell look at this as some kind of victory, and in my mind, it's nothing short of a capitulation. Well, of course it's a capitulation. They had to rely on Democratic votes in both houses of the Senate to get the thing through. Um, You know, furthermore, they they got a couple things. Exactly. They got a couple things in the deal in terms of some modest entitlement reforms to Medicaid and uh, Medicare, excuse me, and Social Security. Um, But, you know, when you take a look at the structure of the whole thing, the way it was done is what folks like the Freedom Caucus, have been pushing back against. It was done in the back room by leadership, never through committee, no conferencing. They were just told, here it is, guys. And, you know, perhaps the first, you know, strike for Ryan saying this process stunk. I mean, I think he actually said it stinks, direct quote. Um, And that's not how his House of Representatives is going to run. Right. So I I think, again, it, it goes back to, You know, this unmanageable, quote unquote, caucus whose really chief complaint is they want to participate in the process. They want the representatives in the House to actually have a say in the legislation that comes to the floor. Right. But you went back and you spoke about those, quote unquote, concessions. You're wrong in the fact that those are not guaranteed. Correct. Most of of these are outlined. So, you know, for, for us to say that we didn't get anything, you know, because there are no guarantees that those cuts are going to be put into effect. As a matter of fact, if you go in and you take a look at it, all that this does is end the likelihood of a standoff and a shutdown. They're calling this a two-year budget agreement, and they could actually go into a standoff right before the presidential election in November. I mean, Politico has it dead right. When you dig dig deep into here, and this goes back into the fact that, you know, great that John Boehner's gone. I don't know how I feel about Paul Ryan, but it is not just the leadership in the House. It's the Republican leadership writ large. Listen to this line. Pelosi's priorities, meaning that of Obama and the administration and the rest of the secular progressives, reforming the Social Security Disability Insurance Program, curbing premium increases for Medicare Part B enrollees, and tens of billions in new domestic spending were met. So once again, she was able to deliver the bulk of the votes. Now, of course, deeper in the article, McConnell's calculus was straightforward. The GOP could not afford a debt default the government shutdown if it hopes to maintain control of the Senate and elect a Republican next year. Ba, 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 ba. Hold on. They go in here. Da, 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 da. I'm just here of the right. personal opinion that a majority in the Senate means nothing. It doesn't because listen to this. Though Democrats are thrilled that a deal carried by the minority, by the minority, Made it through Congress, a rarity indeed. So, ladies and gentlemen, John Boehner is Speaker of the House. Mitch McConnell is Senate Majority Leader of the Senate. The Democrat, do you remember what Republicans got passed in the minority? Nothing. Absolutely. When Republicans were in the minority, it was all. I hate this place. Nothing works here. The medications don't work. Uh, And they do one of these procedures. Oh, yes, uh, uh, Speaker, uh, Senate Majority Leader Reid, I'd like to to the caucus so that I can add an amendment. And Reid would just basically be like, Shut up! So that's when the Republicans were in the minority. Now, Democrats are in the minority, and you end up with a line going, quote, though Democrats are thrilled that a deal carried by the minority made it through Congress a rarity indeed. So our own leadership can't get anything done for our side because they want the media to love them, but they can basically give Pelosi, Reid, and Obama whatever they want. Well, and I mean, you are always, of course, living under the threat of a presidential veto, so you will not see funding for Planned Parenthood cut in the final deal. You will not see, you know anything that resembles fiscal responsibility or austerity because, you know, Obama has an agenda and he's willing to veto legislation to make that agenda go through. And I mean, if you take a look at it, it's always a Republican shutdown. It's always going to be the Republicans' fault. The ultimate shutdown is the president. He vetoes something, it doesn't go through. And, you know, this whole thing where McConnell can't, you know, can't stomach another shutdown, if I recall correctly... 
the last shutdown, um, we actually won majorities back in the House and the Senate not at only record that, levels. Same, not only that, the same thing happened. The same thing happened in 98. You know what? Our guys, the candidates look like they're learning that they're able to politic, but the leadership, baby, that leadership, they always cannot. All right, guys. We're going to take a break, pay some bills. When we come back on the other side, that's what we were talking about. The RNC finally gets their stones and their hackles up, but it might be a little late because the candidates had a secret meeting. J.D. and Stacey, Bloody Marys and Broadsheets, coming back to you in that K98 talk. This is Slickery Trigger for Rebel Road Tactical. With proper care and feeding, your pistol will be ready when you need it. There to save your life. Shouldn't your gear be that good? Whether you need a holster for comfortable everyday carry or a tough-as-nails holster for your next training course, Rebel Road Tactical has what you need. Check us out on the web at rebelroadtactical.com. The staff of K98 Talk and the Spark Radio Network is proud to announce that our very own Rowdy Rick Robinson has been selected as one of the top conservative talk show hosts in the nation for his program, America Off the Rail. Again, congratulations to Rowdy Rick Robinson for a job well done and another reason to stay connected to K98 Talk and the Spark Radio Network. If you like your health care plan, you'll be able to keep your health care plan. This is the most transparent administration in history. Not even a smidgen of corruption. Fact is, we had four dead Americans. What difference at this point does it make? If you've got a business, you didn't build that. The feeling most people get when they hear a Barack Obama speech, my, I felt this thrill going up my leg. I mean, well, I don't have that too often. Steady. It's time to hear the truth about America's biggest challenges. Ricky Robinson, host of America Off the Rails, will tackle the important issues facing America today as he tries to keep America from coming off the track. Get ready to hear the truth every Monday through Friday starting at 7 p.m. Eastern, 6 Central, here on K98talk.com and the Spark Radio Network. Red Nation Rising brings you Town Hall Radio. From a single tweet to three million a month, our community is a force to be reckoned with on social media. So don't miss our show Thursdays, 8 p.m. Eastern on K98 Talk. Our chat room is our co-host and you ask the question. Join us and be heard. So get ready to sound off on Red Nation Rising Radio. No one else is going to do it for you. K98talk.com, a leader in Internet radio. So grab your seatbelts and take the ride of your life on K98talk.com. Welcome back to all our political freaks, geeks, and back alley sneaks. Stacey and I hope you got your drink, you got your stink, you got whatever help makes you think. J.D. and Stacey here on K98 Talk with that Bloody Marys and Broad Sheets. Come to the bottom half of the 11 o'clock hour. Everybody in the sound of my voice, they know what to do. They go to K98talk.org. They get in the chat room. They take their clothes off. They get real drunk. They get real stoned. They go crazy with everybody that's in there. I glance over to the left, and for some reason, Ron is talking about the size of baseball players' asses. Ron, I'm not going to talk to you for a while after that. Remember, guys, we're not just here Sunday morning, 11 a.m., for that 
Bloody Marys and Broad Sheets. We do it again live Tuesdays, 10 p.m. Eastern time for Game On. Thursday night, we do it again, 9 p.m. with our leading 8 p.m. newest show here in K98 Talk. For whom the bell tolls with that Bell River, baby. And we got Jay Cost for the hour live this coming Tuesday, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard on K98 Talk here on Game On with his new book, What's So Bad About Cronyism. Remember, guys, after Tuesday, we're moving to that 9 p.m. Eastern time slot. We're going to be 9 p.m. Tuesdays and Thursdays here on K98 Talk. YouTube, Flipside, Spreaker, hashtag JD Stacy. Should we take a poll of the chat room? About what? About a week from Tuesday, whether they'd rather listen to us or watch the debate. I don't – you could take all the polls you want, and we'll take them to heart. I would rather watch the debate than have nobody listen to us. But, yeah, go ahead. Take a poll. <laughs> <laughs> but not. They can all poll. Well, they whatever you know. they want. I don't – I mean, yes. I'll take it under advisement, but I think that – I think that we'd be better served for the audience watching the debate. I, I also think the audience might be better served watching the debate on Fox Business as opposed to CNBC, where um, they might actually get some questions about what they might want to do if elected. Completely, completely. I'm glad that you brought that up. I'm glad you brought that up. Let me see if I drop this on the board. What we're going to do is we're going to go into uh, basically some of the coverage of the debate and some of the decisions that were made by the uh, by the RNC itself. Just bear with me one second here, kids. I think I took it off. It does it seem, though, the moderators have been universally panned by the media as well. Well, we're going to get into that. They did, but they're still they're still sticking. Uh, uh, you know, John Harwood actually doubled down on. Um, ba, 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 mod, He's a mod, moron. Mod. All right. So, for those of you who missed the debate the other night, who missed our show Thursday night, this is what the moderators had to dish out to our candidates. What should we do? What we should do is to be investing in all types of energy, John. All types of energy. And I've laid out in government. No, John. Do you want me to answer? You want to answer. (laughs) Is this a comic book version of a presidential campaign? Would you feel more comfortable if your employees brought guns to work? What is your biggest weakness and what are you doing to address it? So you don't want the coach to put you in anymore? Governor Kasich, let's talk about marijuana. Working women in this country still earn just 77% of what men earn. They say you act like you hate your job. Do you? Now you're skipping more votes than any senator to run for president. Why not slow down? Daily fantasy sports has become a phenomenon in this country. Isn't that the definition of gambling? And should the federal government treat it as such? We have ISIS and Al Qaeda attacking us, and we're talking about fantasy football. Can we stop? Senator Paul, I've got a question for you. So, so on you the don't same actually subject. want to hear the answer, John? Senator Paul, you don't want to hear the answer. Hey, you John, just I want to insult. You, you, insult. you used your time on something else. When? How do we decide who gets to follow up? I've seen yeah, twenty other was, people follow up. It was at the moderator discretion. Oh, okay. So, so, Governor Kasich, let's talk. Let's talk. Since you're the champion of Americans living paycheck to paycheck, don't you have that backward? No, that's you're wrong. People in this country. Tax Foundation. Just to be clear, they said twi- the no, you gains didn't after tax income. You wrote a story on it. And you had to go back and no, correct it. You did. I did not. Oh, you did. You want to bring not those seventy thousand pages? Not to propose it. To get it done. You want to bring the seventy thousand pages to three? That's right. Three pages. Is that you using really three? small type? So you're so in favor I have of increasing not been this? At all critical of him. Where did I read this and come up with this that you were... Probably, I don't know, you, you people write this stuff. I don't know where you're <laughs> Is this the type of person you want to defend? Well, this is one of the reasons why Tom Perkins and I had disagreements in the boardroom, <laughs> Becky. I'm Becky, I'll respond to that. Thank you very much. Respond to that. Listen, no, we, no, I'm, I'm we're going to get down the line. Becky's we'll, got a question. We'll get to everyone. Back Gentlemen, I'm, I'm Becky, sorry. We need to, we need Becky. We're, we're going to try to move on. Let me just... Moving, guys. Let's, let me just... Uh, there's a I don't, I've got a question for Governor Bush. Like John Hartwood, there's a bigger I, issue. I don't. Hold, hold on, Governor. I've got a question for Governor Bush. You were on the homepage of their website with the logo over your shoulder. Does that not speak to your vetting process or judgment in any way? No, it speaks to the fact that I don't know those. <laughs> See, they know. <laughs> Questions that have been asked so far in this debate illustrate why the American people don't trust the media. And that really was just a sampling of the greatest hits. Now, to Stacy's point, we're going to cover a lot here in this segment. You basically, when we played that montage, you, you basically led to the lack of self-awareness when you had the rest of the media and everybody else kind of ripping into them. Here you have CNBC. There is a great article on CNN uh, in their money section called Shell Shock CNB Staff- Staffers Had a Long Flight Home. Did you see this was article? That, was this when they were getting on the plane? Yeah, this is about the yeah. plane. Yeah, yeah, okay. So... <laughs> Basically what you have. They all of a sudden realized they sucked. 
Right. Well, you had you had Carl Quintanilla, Becky Quick. Uh, I didn't read anything in this article about Hardwood being on that flight. I know that no. the the head of CNBC was on the flight when they went back. You know, they went back and moderated, so they flew from Denver to New York. And both Becky Quick and Carl Quintanilla were moderating Squawk Box at 6 a.m. on Thursday after the Wednesday debate. So before we go into the fallout from it, ads were billed at $250,000 per 30-second ad. They had 14 million viewers, which was by far the largest audience that CNBC ever had. Do you think they really care? Well, it, not, it was a little better than half of what Fox had. It was, yeah. You know, it was, I mean, right. I think that the highest was 24 million. CNN sat at 20. CNBC sat at 14. But, you know, they're like, who cares? I mean, if you read this article, they're like, who cares? $250,000 an ad. We made some bank. Well, except for the <laughs> except for the fact that all right. So what this led to is this led to Rance Priebus. You know, he's the guy who came out and said, "You know, hi, Greta. I'm from Wisconsin. I never saw any colored people till I saw Barack Obama. So they made me head of the GOP." Stop it. So here you have you have the RNC now drops the NBC partnership in response to the CNBC debate. Now, NBC Universal and their news division is having an absolute fit over this because CNBC. MSNBC and NBC News honestly are all, if you look at them structurally, three separate autonomous entities. So you had the RNC that was scheduled with uh, NBC to host a primary debate at the University of Houston in February, but Priebus announced in a letter to the network that the RNC is suspending the partnership. Priebus goes on. Da, 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 da. I write to inform you that pending further discussion between the Republican National Committee and our presidential campaigns, we are suspending the partnership with NBC News for the Republican primary debate at the University of Houston on February 26, 2016. The RNC's sole role in the primary debate process is to ensure that our candidates are given a full and fair opportunity to lay out their vision for America's future. We simply cannot continue with NBC without full consultation with our campaigns. Why did they partner with NBC in the first place? Well, the same reason they partnered with CNN. I mean, I think, you know, the Fox News debate um, was was the kickoff, right? And and I think for the most part, um, you know, I know some people disagree, but there was a lot of vetting going out there. And what Fox did was ask people about some of their more controversial positions I per- and their records. I don't have a problem with that. Um, you know, the CNN debate, eh, kind of like the, you know, Thrill in Manila, it was just really a boxing match. And I think that had maybe some of the candidates coming into this one with a little more of a chip on their shoulder. You saw it, you know, in Ben Carson's opening statements. He said, I'm not going to do this. And then, you know, you basically saw Ted Cruz come out and stand up for the rest of the field. He didn't just object to the questions he was being asked. He objected to the tone, objected to the tone of the entire debate. Right. And, and I he, and I think at some point, you know, these he's absolutely correct in what he said. These folks have been working on policy positions. They've been working on things that they want the American people to hear. And there were absolutely zero substantive questions in that debate. Well, Rance Priebus, he got all mad. He came out right after the debate, which is very rare for a, a party head. He said, quote, well, I was proud of our candidates and the way that they handled tonight's debate. The performance by the CNBC moderators was extremely disappointing and did a disservice to the network. Our candidates and voters, our diverse field of talented and exceptionally qualified candidates, did their best to share ideas for how to reinvigorate the economy and put Americans back to work, despite deeply unfortunate questioning from CNBC. CNBC should be ashamed of this debate and how it was handled. Now, as always, as always, people in conservative media said it better than the RNC chairman. Brent Bazell of the Media Research Center, I thought, absolutely nailed it. Brent said, quote, the CNBC moderators acted less like journalists and more like Clinton campaign operatives. What was supposed to be a serious debate about the many issues plaguing our economy was given up for one Democratic talking point after another served up by the so-called moderators. They clearly war game this thinking that a relentless series of personal attacks on the candidates would somehow drive their ratings and help Hillary Clinton. The CNBC debate will go down in history as an encyclopedic example of liberal media bias on stage. The audience roared its disdain for these so-called journalists and all of America heard it. That's true. CNBC That's should be true, embarrassed yeah. for their pitiful display of partisan liberal media bias and apologize to the GOP candidates and the American people. That is the statement 
That is the statement that should have come out of the RNC. Yeah, and, you know, it, it was to the point, J.D., seriously, where I'm watching the debate, and I didn't even – the liberal media bias is so bad that I didn't even recognize some of it while I was watching it because I expect it. So at one point, there was a question about wage inequality, and the moderator talked about our position. Oh, I heard that in real time. That was Becky Quick. I told – but I'm saying I didn't – I didn't even – it didn't even, like, strike me as odd. That's oh. what – I did. I that's believe she shut that's exactly way. how by you just expect those kind of questions. You expect that kind of partisanship because that's what we always see. And it was actually somewhat disturbing to me when I read after the fact that that happened and I didn't even take note of it. Well, hopefully the Republicans can keep the balls that they took out on stage because they were huge. You could drive them around in a mm-hmm. dump truck because this is how the media. This is how your partisan MSM goose step and mock Schnell lock step elitist coastal media, this is how they respond. CNBC spokesperson. CNBC spokesperson responds to GOP criticism. Quote, this is from CNBC. People who want to be president of the United States should be able to answer tough questions. Unquote. CNBC that, well, has... Those weren't tough questions. But they have interviewed Hillary Clinton in the past, and there has never... Never, ever, 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 ever been an example of anything like that. John Harwood himself, this is from The Federalist, still refusing to admit that he was wrong. Here is the entire exchange between Harwood and Marco Rubio in transcript. You should check out this article. Then it goes on, Harwood's mischaracterization of Rubio's plan during the debate was so brazen that the president of the Tax Foundation, that was the foundation that Harwood was... uh, uh, putting up as an example of somebody who would trash Rubio's plan, himself felt compelled to correct John Harwood. And then, and then Harwood continues, both on Twitter, on NBC, and on his other platforms, to double down and say, no, don't believe your lying eyes. Well, I mean, <laughs> I don't know how you can do that with any credibility, not that Harwood had a ton with me to begin with, but... I mean, when somebody fact checks you and the head of the organization comes out and says, no, you actually got that wrong. I didn't have time to go back and see if he actually had to do a retraction um, on the article that Rubio referenced. But I mean, clearly this is something that's been out there for a while. And to bring it into a forum like that and then challenge the candidate was just an and then not letting it go. It's like he's like a dog with a bone. He's going to say he's right, whether he is or not. I mean. Here we have a debate debate moderator acting like Harry Reid did when he started talking about Romney's taxes. It was a flat out lie to begin with, but I'm just going to double down, double down, double down, double down until somebody has to do something about it. Well, as always, you know, because we want to bring our audience the best, sharpest, cutting edge news that there is. We had the K98 Talk news crew out of the debate and they were actually able to get a comment. This is Chris Christie commenting right after the debate on Becky Quick, one of the CNBC moderators. Oh, that woman. Got a mouth like an outboard motor. All the time. And that's so apropos. I mean, in that debate, and this goes back to the prep that they did. If you're flying back to anchor your show at 6 a.m. the next morning, there's no debrief. There's no introspection. She actually nails Trump on, on, on him trashing H-1B1 visas and Zuckerberg and his position and then said to him, oh, where did I read that? It was on his website, but she was wrong at the anchor for not knowing that. You got a minute and a half. Take us out. <laughs> well, you know, I have to say that I am happy that uh, the RNC is kind of standing up. You know, the DNC has never had the stones, if you will, to put their candidates in front of Fox. So, you know, I think maybe that this has happened is a good thing. We have a lot of conservative folks out there talking about live streaming debates, using different forums, and actually bringing in people that will talk to and ask questions about the things that Republican and conservative voters care about. Um, there really wasn't a lot they talked about. I don't care about the wage gap. If you can do a multiple regression, it doesn't exist. Um, you know, it, it goes back to why are we letting these more liberal outlets drive the narrative with our candidates? It doesn't do us any good. 
No, but I think we might. We actually might see an opportunity for some uh, new conservative media folks to be there because, like I said in the beginning, one of the reasons that the uh, RNC is so late to the party on this is right after that debate uh, put together by Donald Trump and Ben Carson, the candidates got together this past weekend at a retreat, cutting the RNC out of the picture, saying, how are we going to change this debate structure going forward? It's the first time that I have seen a candidate revolt against the institutional party, and I think from our point of view, that is a very good thing. Coming back into the top of the 12 o'clock hour, ending the fastest hour in conservative radio, we got more robots, healthcare.gov and Obamacare going up, baby, and of course we got Black Lives Matters. J.D. and Stacey, Bloody Marys and Broadsheets, the radio duo so popular, even Diamond Dave loves us on K98 Talk. Ain't that right, Dave? One break, coming. We'll be right back. I do this every Sunday with the sound boards, damn it. I, you know what? I'm moving all the breaks over to a different board. That's all. We'll be back in three minutes. This is Jason, host of According to Me. I'd like to invite you to check out my show. It's a two-hour show that lasts 60 minutes in... Uh, listen, I hate to interrupt, but uh, one thing I can do is read off a script. Just say, uh, let me be clear a lot. It works. President Obama, I, I, I can handle this. It's a radio promo. I, I'm not green. I've done this before. Did someone say green? Now, Al Gore is here. Listen, I'm just trying to record a radio promo. Do you mind? Now, uh, do you say good things about me on the show? <laughs> no, not at all. But if it makes you feel any better, I rip on Republicans just as much. The AM radio frequencies give off very high levels. Levels of radiation. Look, my show is on the internet, which you invented. I mean, can, I, can I just do my promo? I got a pen. I can veto that, you know. I know you got a pen. It's not a law. It's a radio promo. Listen, listen, just listen to my show. Barack Obama and Al Gore hate it, so you're going to love it. Here's an executive order. Don't listen to a show. He doesn't like me. He's racist. And he doesn't recycle either. That's it. I'm done. It's According to Me, Wednesdays, 10 p.m. Eastern, right here on K98 Talk. We will never fully understand what we've asked of our military service members or their families, asking them to put themselves in harm's way, to endure it all. But we do understand that it's our turn, our duty, to keep them secure for the rest of their lives. Wounded Warrior Project long-term support programs help our most severely ill or injured veterans live independently, at no cost, for life, so that they might stand at ease. Join us at findwwp.org. K98 Talk is expanding its lineup for 2015. This means we are expanding our advertising base. Whether you're a startup trying to push through to the next level or an established business trying to supplement your advertising budget, web-based advertising is a solid investment. Thanks to Talk's newest partnership with TuneIn Radio and instant access to our sister station, K98 FM, we give you worldwide access at a reasonable cost. Interested parties should email us at sales at k98fm.com. Stacey, welcome back. The best, smartest political radio audience in the business here. K98 Talk, Bloody Marys and Broadsheets, your cure for your mainstream media hangover. If you can hear my voice, you know where you're supposed to be. Get over to K98Talk.org right now. Get in the chat room, take the clothes off, start drinking, say hello to everybody, start screaming. Remember, it's Sunday, so starting at 4.05 p.m. today. One more time, baby. Gonna be beating up on them Oakland Raiders. Remember, guys, we're not just here live Sunday, 11 a.m. We do it again Tuesday nights, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thursday nights again live, 9 p.m. for game on. This coming Tuesday, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Live for the hour, we got Jay Cost talking his notebook. What's so bad about cronyism? And we got that Bell River from Who the Bell Tolls as our new Thursday night leading at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. 
Fridays, 5 p.m., WN, 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 JC, South Jersey, Philadelphia, Northern Delaware for that 4.2 million listeners. After this coming Tuesday, Stacey and I will be moving to 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for that game on on Tuesday. So that's going to be Tuesday 9, Thursday 9, but not this week. Tuesday 10, 9. Then after that week, going to be 9, 9, and 9, 9, 9, like Herman Cain. Flip side, the YouTube, the speaker, the whole thing, the wah, 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 and welcome back to the show. That's how it goes, right? Hello. Oh, something like that. Something like that. Something like we that. We got so much in this segment. Where do you want to start? Um, oh, at the Halloween party I was at last night. Everybody was in costumes. You just heard people yelling. Hey, where are the white women at? You couldn't tell. You absolutely couldn't tell. <laughs> uh. <laughs> you really couldn't. Okay, terrific. Oh, you know who I should have went as? I should have. Giggity, 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 let's have sex. Now that you say that, of all the stupid... Well, what was your costume, J.D.? Uh, I was J.D. J- J.D. doesn't do the costume thing. Oh, okay. Uh, one night when I was tripping on mushrooms and absinthe about 10 years ago, that was different. I ended up trying to have sex with a like stuffed scarecrow in a bar, and there's pictures of it, and it's just something I'm very ashamed of. Oh, <laughs> somebody should post those to Facebook or something. I am entertaining enough on absinthe that usually by the time the night ends, I'm walking home stumbling, and I have 100 people behind me going... I'm your number one fan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're just trying to make sure that you make it back to your doorway. Oh, my God. All right, so oh I have everything God. except the, the Kali View story. Why don't you lead off with that? Oh, uh, well, the women on The View, and this actually kind of surprised me because Carly went on The View early, and the girls on the show actually seemed to like her. Um, it was a very, very good discussion, and they kept asking her, why are you a Republican? You, you're too nice. You don't seem like you'd be a Republican. Well, after this last debate, they decided to liken Carly's face to a Halloween mask and figured that if one of them could wear a mask like that, it might be kind of scary. Um, well, let's shift you know. this. Wait, wait a second. For, for The View. So I don't, I don't watch The View, but I had a— Neither we, do I. We, <laughs> I, w- I was looking at a clip of it online for something we were doing for show prep the other day. When the hell did Raven Simone— get on the view a while back they kept they kept like kicking um right-leaning folks off of it and replacing them with unapologetic progressives i think the last republican that was on was on when carly was on and they've since dumped her too yeah, but, I mean, did she do anything except being... No, the, she was the, just the little kid on the Cosby well, show. No, that, no, no, she wasn't the little kid on the Cosby show. Raven Rudy, Simone? No. Rudy was the little kid on the Cosby show. So no, my, she was the even younger what, one. What, what, you, if you would let me finish a sentence. All right. Rudy is the little kid on the Cosby show. Raven Simone was the weird little kid on the Cosby show when it was almost over that nobody knew where she came from. It was like, for those of you who watched All in the Family and Archie Bunker and either, it was Archie and that, and it was hysterical, and then one day you woke up and there was some girl, Stephanie, living with them, and it was like an after-school special. I don't, I, I don't, yeah. I don't like where this is going. I no, like no, I, I don't know what Raven Simone ever did. I think she had a short-lived show on the Disney Channel. Mm-hmm. Oh, and for those of you, years, for those that, of you, that's all I got. For those of you who missed, for those of you who missed a Thursday night show, we finally have a theme for Dr. Ben Carson. And do you know why that's his theme song, audience? Because he looks like he's blind and Stevie Wonder. As a matter of fact, we have audio from the other night's debate. He's talking about his tax plan. Uh, and I'd like to thank all the children and the people in the world today and talk about my tax plan. <laughs> you need to stop. <laughs> <laughs> okay, terrific. I never thought the guy would get this far. He is like the <laughs> nicest guy in the race. He's got very high likability uh, and you're going to make people angry if you keep uh, mocking him. I make people angry just by being alive. Well, no, you already made everyone in the state of Iowa who listened to us stop. Oh, yeah. Well, listen, they can both Ben Carson is like at 24% or something. We don't want 24% of conservatives to stop listening to us because you're making fun of their guy. No, but now that it's become a permanent segment on the show, we got another story in the stack. (laughs) 
I feel like these these stories are just for Ron. Doesn't Ron really seem to dig on these stories? Teaching old well, robots. Beaker new, seems to like them too. Teaching old robots new tricks. Machine swap knowledge about how to complete a task despite being hundreds of miles apart. So basically, this is a story about robots teaching each other things. Let me ask you a question. Do you think that the sex robots that we talked about a few weeks ago could do the same thing? Like Look, you, do you we talked it, about how those robots would not be given to people who might do things with them yeah, and but, how wrong that is in general. Yeah, so, but, no, I don't think robots should be teaching each other those kinds of things. That's just frightening. Yes, but what if – okay, so what if, what if, what if the, the creepy little Japanese guy that turned his robot into the sex robot, right? So say no. the sex robot had bad technique. And no. there's another robot, like in Nebraska, that's got it all going on no. and figured it out. No. No. You don't think the robots get, like, all freaky? And no. Like... <laughs> we like the party. All right, so you are against robots teaching people things. I, I, I'm, I'm against robots becoming so human that we can't tell the difference. They're machines. Hold on. Let me just hit the audio in bubble. All right, so we're not having sex. We can't have sex with them, and they can't teach sex. Let's not talk it's to like, them. How- it, it's like there, there becomes a certain ethical kind of thing where you just got to go, whoa, wait a minute, that's really too much. Wh- who- I mean, they made, they made like teeny bopper films about this in the 80s. Hold on a second. One more audio switch. Rip Muppet is talking about robots with gag reflexes. Okay. Ew. Who visited the Hillary Clinton campaign? Oh, <laughs> This is beautiful. We've oh, been waiting great. for this one, dudes. Oh, just to play this. I found this story just to play Sanford and Son. No, right, so it what was happened buried, to Grandma? too, wasn't it? They don't want people knowing that happened. I found this by accident. What happened with Grandma? Well, Grandma was giving a speech about judicial reform and what she was going to do to, like, not put so many people in jail and let people run amok and... Black Lives Matter showed up, and they chanted Black Lives Matter and kept singing the entire time she was talking. But what happened that was different when they had disrupted her event is that she had them removed. Well, that that <laughs> well, first she 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 gave her patented uh. <laughs> You really want to listen to what I have to say. I oh, promise you're going to like what I have to say. Please, goes, please just listen to what I have to say. This goes back when they blew up Uncle Speedle. Ha, ha, Mr. Vargas, Mr. Vargas. Well, we that was The colored people are yelling. Ha, ha, the colored people are yelling. So now she is the default. De facto, the leftists and progressives are wrapping themselves around the fact that Uncle Bernie's got their heart, but, but, but Hillary's got the vote. And they are so fractured in identity politics on the left that you have Black Lives Matter. Black Lives Matter protesting Hillary Clinton's events. Clinton supporters tried to drown out the protesters with chants of Hillary and let her talk. The Democratic frontrunner ignored the protests and tried to continue with her speech for several minutes. Do you understand what this fat piano leg thief would have said if a bunch of black people in an activist movement on the left came to protest a Republican speaking and the Republican did nothing but walk over, talk over them? For those of you oh, who want they would to be- see- they would be vilified in the media. For those of you who want to see the perfect way to respond to this, see Marco Rubio getting shouted down right after his announce. Uh, we'll find it on the YouTubes and play it on uh, on Tuesday night show or maybe Thursday with Jay Cost. It was really, really good. Okay, are you surprised? Are you surprised? So, our pinata of a healthcare system. Oh. Uh. Arriba! That's what you play every time you go into the doctor's you know, office. You know, this is just one of those times when there is absolutely no joy in being right. No. Everything that is wrong with Obamacare is everything the conservative movement was saying when it was being voted on, when it was initially being um, installed, shall we say. Um, and it, it, every bit of it has come true. Are you kidding? <laughs> but listen, it's not that it came true. It's that people are getting the bill. This was never not true. This was never not true. This oh, was no. never, never, like never, 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 you never, never, never not true. If you like your doctor, you can keep your doctor. If you like your plan, you can keep your plan. That was never true. $2,500. $2,500. Say- oh, yeah, you were going to save $2,500. Never mind, you're going to have a $5,500 deductible. Mm-hmm. No, and that, that's the whole thing. You're going to be at five, six, seven grand. Basically, if you get your Obamacare bill... 
That's the you have just paid too much. So everybody's getting screwed. My guess is it is not decreasing at all the emergency room visits and everything not at else all. is just a mess. We got a minute. Well that's left. one that's one way to like reach your deductible right away. One emergency room visit and you're done. We got a minute left before we punch out. Tell everybody why Jay Cost is the best guest in the radio. Oh, because Jay Cost is really smart, really funny, and he can take a really complex concept and boil it down so that everyone can understand. And for those of you who absolutely love political history and haven't heard him on the show before, the man is just an absolute genius. My recommendation to my favorite listening audience that just joined us for the fastest conservative hour in radio on a Sunday is you get over to theweeklystandard.com. You find yourself Jay Cost. You go through some of what he's uh, written. My recommendation, also get to that Amazon's baby. Buy some of his books. That's usually when Stacey and I have him on. The man is just an absolute, 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 absolute brilliant genius. Speak Speaking about brilliant geniuses, hopefully Chris Ivory and that running game going to bust open them Oakland Raiders, baby, so that at about 7 o'clock tonight we can all be like. So you mean do better than they did against the Patriots? Well, I know. They've lost two games and they're a game behind in the AFC. Let me tell you something. The Jets, <laughs> the, let me, let me tell you, the, the Jets have a better record and are commanding their division better than your Giants. So after hey, Eli I learns how you, to throw a football again. They were in again, the big game last year. They are going to suck wind this oh year. Oh, my. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice every excuse. Every time. Nice excuse. Every Lionel. Time. Lionel. Get us the hell out of here. All right. Tell all the nice people how you're going to close out your weekend. Uh, with a long, long nap. And where can they find you before the next show starts? You can find me on Twitter, as always, at Scott's Fire, S-C-O-T-S-F-Y-R-E, and on Facebook at Stacey Lennox. This might be the outro where they say it about us, but I'm on Game On JD, and you can't tell it right now, but I'm on bar stools, alleyways, donkey shows, shady situations, places I donkey shouldn't be. Shows. And if I live through it, I'll see you Tuesday night. If it's Sunday, it's Bloody Marys and Broadsheets. We're your cure from your weekly news hangover. Thank you for taking it easy with us. You can find our show account on Twitter at JD and Stacy, or send us your interesting news story of the week to Game On War. That's W A A R at gmail.com. And you can find me on Twitter at Scott's Fire and on Facebook at Stacy Lennox. And you can find me on the Twitters at Game On JD. When our water heater broke down last month, it was a nightmare. It took five hours for the plumber to show up, and he charged us a couple of hundred bucks just to come out. Then it cost another $1,800 to put in the new water heater. By the time it was all said and done, I felt like I'd been taken. But what else could I do? The smartest thing you can do is get a home warranty from American Residential Warranty. Their home warranties pay to repair or replace all your major appliances when they break. And they will break. And at the worst possible time, call American Residential Warranty right now for free information on home warranties starting at just pennies a day. Don't wait for your refrigerator to stop running or your ceiling fans to stop turning. Call American Residential Warranty right now. Ask how you can save up to 50% on water and dryer coverage. Just call 1-800-513-6154. That's 1-800-513-6154. Again, 1-800-513-6154. Call now. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 a pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 1-800-516-7602 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 1-800-516-7602 to take your call right now. Call 1-800-516-7602. That's 1-800-516-7602. Again, 1-800-516-7602. Giggity, 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 let's have sex.